CataractCoach.com, resident divide and conquer. This is performance after about 250 cataract surgeries completed from an anonymous resident. So let's watch the case here. We've sped it up to two times normal speed. There's a paracentesis. Looks like sitting superiorly, good draping, lashes out of the way. Let's see that main incision. Nice tunnel length, a little on the short side maybe, but no, I think I'll take it. That's pretty good, nicking the limbal vessels. Now filling the eye with a dispersive viscoelastic. That looks great. Nice dilation, eye staying well centered, good focusing. Let's see that rexus. So going in the incision, good job pivoting, getting that uh, rexus capsule flap edge flipped over and continuing a little bit more with that cystome. I like this idea. You should have the control to be able to use that cystome to create the capsule rexus or at least do a large part of it like you see here. And now that it's uh, flipped over like this, now it's easy enough to grab it. And let's see the rexus, good pivoting in the incision and it looks like an appropriate size, probably about a five millimeter rexus, keeping it nice and organized and completing it. Very nice rexus, I like it. Let's see the hydro dissection. Sometimes this is a tough step to learn. So a little fluid wave going across, tapping the center of the nucleus, I like that, a little bit of rotation. All right, pretty efficient. Again, coming in now with the FACO probe. And let's see what we got here for a second instrument. Eye staying well sound. Okay, no second instrument yet. Looks like it's a divide and conquer case. So making that central trench nicely done. A little deeper in the center, a little shallower in the periphery. I like how the probe's going sub incisional to really get down on that part of the nucleus as well. That's very nicely done. And now this is about a, a single width of the FACO probe. And is it going to be cracked at the time? No, rotate first. Okay, rotate 90 degrees. And then continuing here with the divide and conquer. Nice grooving, again, deeper in the center, shallow in the periphery. And then rotating again, that ball tipped chopper or second instrument is doing a good job rotating that thing around. So this time doing all four grooves or quadrants uh, separating before actually doing the crack. There's the first crack, rotating it again. Second crack, now look how the eye stays in primary. See the eye is not moving around, the eye staying right in primary. That's fantastic. That's really a great job. Now I'm switching to a higher vacuum level to get that first quadrant out of the bag. And once that quadrant comes out, obviously there's more working room and the rest will be easy. So beautifully done here. This uh, young doctor has certainly practiced a, a lot and it shows this is a really nice technique here, very controlled. You know, you can do divide and conquer as your primary method for the entirety of your career. Certainly nothing wrong with that. You find your happiness. And so in this case, divide and conquer was very cleanly done. Chopper there in that safe mode, taking out that last quadrant, last little bits of nuclear material coming out. Wow, beautifully done and very efficient. Minimal amount of FACO energy. So I think that's a great divide and conquer technique. Very, very nicely done. For case 250, hey, I'm impressed. I like it a lot. Now cleaning up the cortex here, going around. Coaxial IA probe. And nicely cleaned up. Really just a, a very clean job here. That motion of the eye and moving it back and forth is pretty typical. Okay to get that a little bit out of primary, especially when you go in that sub-incisional space, you may not have another choice. If you're doing coaxial in that sub-incisional space, you almost have to get the eye out of primary. If you were doing a bimanual IA approach, of course, it'd be different. And it'll come out, clean looking capsular bag. Now the question is, do you need to do capsular polishing? You know, if you're a resident and this is your case 250, I wouldn't worry about the capsule polishing so much just yet. Building the other skills is more important. And you can see here, it's a pretty clean capsule bag. There's really not a lot of uh, lens of material left there. So filling the bag with viscoelastic, left slightly enlarging the incision. Maybe next time, hold on to the eye with the other hand. Maybe hook the paracentesis. Here comes the lens. Looks like uh, an acrylic lens, single piece being injected in the capsule bag. Now we can see it's a six millimeter optic and indeed it is a five millimeter rexus. Again, very nicely done, ensuring that the entire IOL is completely in the capture bag, which it is. And now removing viscoelastic here. I really like this case. So whoever this anonymous resident or registrar is, wherever you are in the world, we enjoyed your surgery. You are doing a fantastic job here. So you've got the basics down beautifully. Now let's just uh, focus on some other little fine details. And again, here at the end, let's hope we're going to center that lens up a little bit more maybe. But anyway, it looks fantastic. Keep up the good work and thank you for submitting the video. If you want us to review your video, hey, send it in. We get many submissions every day though and we can't feature them all.